Hello right, friends, welcome to part three of this Burnett Les Paul custom refret. Right, at the last, uh, last you saw of me on this guitar, regarding this guitar, was at the end of part two where I said I need to straighten the neck. And I did straighten the neck, uh, but something I didn't think about, and I'm going to show you. I'm surprised I haven't come across this before. You'll see, the two inlays have fell out there. Reason being, normally when I straighten the neck and I get some heat in there, I've got the frets in and I put the metal bar across the frets and I heat that and it heats the frets, gets some heat in the wood and we clamp it back and sort it out that way. Forgot all about it, no frets in this. Um, and it heated the inlays and it scorched them a little bit and they've dropped out. And there you go. And I've talked to Danny, the owner. I said, do I have to replace them? And he says, no, he's not worried about that. Danny's one of these people he is not that much worried about the cosmetics as long as the guitar plays absolutely right and that's what he's all about so he's not big on that and so he just said no so let's just pull them back in It'll be fine so that's what we're going to do we're going to glue them back in um we're going to do quite a lot of things today but first i'll show you how we're going to go i've taped up the old areas there i'm going to mix up some epoxy i'm going to drop them back in and we're just going to, I'm going to let them we're going to get, i'm not going to clamp them in i'm going to tape over them I'll get some um, Teflon stuff over the top of it so the glue doesn't stick to the Teflon and I'll just tape over them so it holds them in place and then we'll give that an hour or so and then what I'll do is I'll go and sand them, I'll sand everything down. I've got to radius the fingerboard anyway. That is the next job really, to get this all clamped up on the jig, get this all re-radiused, uh, all sanded off nice and smooth. The electrics, they're all out, I'll sort all that out later, um, but I'm ready to cut Right now, I've, I've come in now because I'm ready to cut the frets. And I've cut the fret wire, it's all longer than it needs to be. And what I've got to do is, I've radiused it, radius, that's really quite tight. I must be radius to about seven, probably seven or eight inch. Uh, that's the excess I've got, I've got a little bit, so I've got enough spare there for three more frets. But what I need to do with these is, I need to be nipping off the tangs at the edge, and filing the edges. I've got files here. Um, I'll show you basically how I'm going to do that and I'm not showing you precision what I'm going to do is I'm just going to nib it because these are going to sit we've got a binding each side so we need to remove this tank so it sits over the binding and I'll take my fret nippers here or nip, people call them nibbers, nippers, whatever they are and all I'll do is I'll take, I'll take a little at a time place it inside inside that groove there and there you go and that's nibbed off a little bit off the end there, can you see that? I don't get too close. And what I'll do then is I'll take a file and remove any burrs. I've got a safe edge there, so I'll take the safe edge to that area. I've shown you the wrong way around actually. I don't actually do it like that, I actually do it like this. I take the file, I take the fret, and I remove the file or the fret across the file. That's how I do it. There you go, and I'll finish off. Doing it this way. And you now see that we've got that bit there for the overhang on the binding. That's not cut to precision, it's just cut to give me a rough idea. When it comes to um, finishing them off, I've got a plier somewhere, what have I done with it? I don't know what I've done with it, I see. And what I'll do is, when it comes to flattening the end, I'll take my cutters and we'll just nip off the end here, like so. We've got the end nice and flush there. So that's it, so I'm going to crack on with these and get them all done. It takes quite a while this. I am up to, I would say I'm up to seven and a half hours total now. I'm not doing the, I'm not timing it uh, to change my prices or whatever. I'm timing it just to give myself a rough idea of how long a complete refret is going to take me. I know his extra job with doing electrics and pickup fitting on this, but I'll take that time off at the end. So I'm going to crack on um, and I'll show you how we got on later. Right, before I whiz off and get all these things done, I'm going to, I've got the first one done. I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to show you where we are. And hopefully you're going to get a good view. Here's the one I've done. And I've tried to keep the tang as close to the binding as possible. So if you look, you might want to zoom in. We're right close there. 
more or less right. We're not right up to the binding, we have got probably half a millimetre each side gap. So when I place that in there, it's going to sit either side, it's going to, but it's going to sit, it's going to fit. And when I press that in, it's just going to squeeze out just a little bit. See how I've got more radius on there than I actually need. I might have to just remove a little bit more tang off there. You do it by eye, and you've got to take your time with stuff like this. Because you don't want to remove too much. I mean, removing too much would not be a disaster, but there you go, I think we're absolutely fine there. And there you go. We should have enough clearance each side there. When we press these in, I'll be, I'll be um, using tight bond as the glue. Now, I've not cut these slots yet, so they might not be quite deep enough. Um, I'll show cutting the slots a little bit later on. Uh, but I think that would be just about okay there. But sometimes you have to just turn them around, get that tank to work. I've gone with a slightly less tang this time round because the last less Paul I did the tang was too wide and it bent the neck back. I think that's going to be absolutely fine there. Uh, obviously the fret is going to need, or the slot is going to need cutting. I will find there you go. I may as well show you more little bits as I'm here. Here's my little Hosco saw. And this you gotta watch you don't cut through the binding because this saw is sharp. But what you do is you just go in. And you just, there you go, don't go too mad. You've got blades that cut both ways. Get into the corners, right in like so. Don't go mental, it's nice and gentle. Get into the corner. And there you go. Might get a little bit resist resistance, but you don't worry about things like that. And I would say that that should be absolutely fine now. So with fret jobs, you've got to take your time. See, that's, that's going to fit absolutely perfectly now. So there's one done. Once that's glued in, pressed in and clamped down, you'll be absolutely fine. So, 21 more to do. So I will crack on with it. So I'm just mixing up some epoxy. Not too much to get these um, inlays back in. Probably going to have more than I need. It's no bad thing. I see why I've taped everything up. Enough, but the thing is, it's best to put more in than you need, isn't it? And there you go. Have some tissue somewhere. There we go. Now I've already put these inlays the way they need to be. So, I imagine this is how they stick them in anyway. Or the adhesive bite, or the adhesive bite. That's not the right way. Oh, here we go. Have a guess. That's definitely, that's not the right way. It's too high on that end, I think. Yep, fantastic. Live video. I thought I had that redder to go in the right way. Let's try this. That was the right way. Quite a bit of gaps here. There you go.
Cool thing about that, they both sit in proud where they need to be. I will get some Teflon because that won't stick. Yeah, that'll be enough. Fantastic. I don't need to clamp anything, I'm just going to get some tape around there. That really should be enough to hold these where they need to be. I'll leave that for an hour or so. And we'll come back and check, make sure everything's right. And if it is, and we're sat a little bit proud and all the holes are filled in, we can just get on with sanding that thing fingerboard. And here we are, maybe an hour or so later, and we have got the inlays back in. Um, pretty smooth, I've sanded them down a little bit. Um, this is not finished, this net, I need to re-radius this anyway. So I'm going to get a radius beam on here, 12 inch radius beam, get some, put some 160 or 240 grit on there. I'm going to smooth this all off ready for accepting the new frets. As you saw earlier, this one's already done, I've got the rest to do. We'll get them all nice and clean, we'll try not to cut through the binding. Um, sometimes can happen, those Hosco blades are really really sharp but what I'm going to do is I'm going to get all the frets cut now clear these slots and um, we'll move on back soon welcome back and now you can see that all the frets have been cut um, they're all in position just about I've even cut more or less to the width you'll see that the tang is just inside the binding on each side uh, these are going to go in really really nice we all lot are done over radius easy part will be pressing these in because we can use the press the difficult part will be one two three four five six seven eight, nine, ten. these eleven because we have to hammer these in because I can't get fit this under my press it's too wide so I'll have to hammer these in first eleven uh, it, they don't seem to go in as well hammering them in what I think I'm going to do is when I've cut these fret slots I'm going to soak some oil, uh, just some mineral oil in there, let it just soften the wood up a little bit because it can then take the frets better. I normally do about 24 hours anyway, especially when I'm using ebony. Now this is rosewood so it might be a little bit easier but it just helps to hammer them in when the wood's been softened just a little. It won't stop the glue drying or anything, it won't alter, any, alter the way the frets go in, it'll just make them go in that little bit easier. I'm going to be using tight bond to hold them in. Once I get the first 11 in, we're going to get the clamp on there straight away and we're going to clamp them in. Uh, then we'll come back, we'll press over 11 in once the first lot are done. We will find though, because we're doing it in two halves, we'll, fi we'll find that these probably aren't, won't seat as well as the ones pressed in. So it might be a little bit higher at this end. So it means we've got to do a little bit more work at this end to level. Normally we do get about a tenth of a millimetre, a little bit higher. Uh, it's just because you're not, pre you can press them in with force, but you're hammering them in. You're just hammering them straight to the wood, you're not pressing them into the wood. So that's the way it's going to go. Um, so I'll be back with an update later. Right, I just want to show something here why I'm taping up this fingerboard to accept the new frets. And what I do is I take a piece of spear fret wire, the same diameter, the same length, width, everything. Well, the same fret wire I'm using to refret with. What I do is I file off the bobs, or most of the bobs, and I cut a bit off the end, like so, there, so it can go over the, the uh, binding. And what I do is I put it in the slot. And I just press it in the slot, which enables two things. Shows me that the new slot is going to go in, and it also gives me somewhere to tape up the fingerboard. So when I glue them in, the glue is not going to spill out on the fingerboard. Some people use wax on the fingerboard and wipe it off later. I don't. I use a tape. And that is going to take me right up to the edge of the fret. new fret that's going to go in. And I'll take my tape and I'll tear down the middle again. Okay. And what I'll do is I'll do the whole fingerboard like this. And there you go. And I'll keep moving along and blah blah blah. 
and um, we'll get it all taped up. Just wanted to show you that nice little trick. What I also want to show is how I have the guitar. This is on my setup bench. I've got it propped up using a neck holder there. We've got it cushioned with a big thick piece of felt, piece of wood on top. Same here, piece of wood underneath, thick felt. Couple of cloths under here, folded over, folded over to support this part. A little bit underneath, and it's not tight, it will move, but that is just holding the neck. All this area is now fully supported. Now I'm gonna hammer. First 11 frets are gonna be hammered in because I can't get this bit under my fret press. So I always hammer the first 11. So now what I've got is I've got the guitar, Sturdy. When I am in there, it's got a solid base all the way along. I can hammer the frets in, drop some glue in there, hammer the frets in, get the first 11 in. Once they're in, I'll unclamp. I'll put the radius bar across there and we'll clamp down just for a couple of hours, hold all the frets in nice and steady, and then we can clamp the other 11 in. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to crack on. I'm not going to show hammering these in. I'm going to get them hammered in, get it clamped up. Then I'm going to come back and we're going to get take this over to the press and we're going to get the last 11 pressed in. Then we'll just clamp all of them. Right, just showing that I've hammered off in. In fact, I've hammered more than half in. I've gone for 12 instead of a normal 11. We're all hammered in. They are all level. I've just checked them. What I'm going to do now is stick a radius clamp over there and we're going to just clamp them in uh, just for an hour or so for the glue to dry. And I can go and get the rest put in on the fret press. See, everything's all taped up, sectioned off. In case we get any splashback off the glue, which we didn't get anyway, we weren't going to get, but um, I just wanted to take that precaution. Nice pieces of chamois leather. There you go, that's all off now. Now I'm going to go and get the guitar all clamped up, take can be chucked away. Job done. Right, guys, you can see the burnet all on the neck jig. And um, do apologise, but I've not filmed anything since uh, before I finished a refret. I think I got off hammered in last time we saw anything. Well, the frets went in really. These were pressed in the last 10. First 12 were hammered in. They hammered in really well because I used a narrower tanged fret wire, 0.5mm, where I've been using 06 before. Uh, hammered in really easy. Uh, got some, got plenty of uh, tight bond in there. To, well, not to hold them in, just to fill the gaps. And you'll notice, with keen eye amongst you will notice that I've already beveled the edges of these. I've filed the edges uh, all down the edge of the guitar. We managed to not touch the binding. The binding's all intact. Touched a little bit there. Uh, like I say, all the beveling's done. I'm now setting up getting ready to, um, to do the fret level. Uh, I'm not really happy with this gauge. I think the gauge is about on its way out. So what I'm going to do is, I don't want to replace that or what, I mean that should be zeroed out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get these zeroed out, get the neck support underneath properly. We need to get these level to do the levelling. I mean it's not imperative I have it on, a, on here to do the levelling because as long as the neck's straight, which I think it is, we're going to take, we're not straight edge, we're going to place it over, straight down the middle there. Make sure we are straight down the middle. Beautiful. And that neck is straight. That end to this end. We've got a tiny bit of gaps on there. We ain't worried about that because the two edges are level and it's touching here. So we're absolutely fine. That's as straight as we can have that neck anyway. I'm going to get all supported underneath. And what we'll do is we're going to skim. We're going to get it all taped up. And we'll skim across the top with a leveling beam, get them all level. Once they level, that's it. it's just a matter of recrowning and polishing. You know how it works. Um, but rather than me prattle on, I am going to crack on. Right, you're nice to see where I've got the neck all taped up. We're still zeroed out. Um, we've got the jig clamped at both ends, so nothing's going to move anywhere. Uh, next part of the process is going to be, I'm going to check the frets for level. I'm going to go across with a fret rocker. Blah, 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 blah. We're going to check we're all level. Any of it on level, I'll mark off and what we'll do is we'll file the top, get it close to where it wants to be. Once it's pretty close where it needs to be, I'm going to zoom across the whole lot with a uh, levelling beam. I've seen all this before, I've seen on plenty of videos. Got two sides here, we've got 240 grit that side, we've got 400 grit that side. 
to start removing something with quite a lot of material we'll go over 240 once we get close to where we need to be once everything's just about level we'll finish off with a 400 grit um, and then we can proceed with the crowning and the polishing uh, you've seen all this before I've done loads of videos of this so uh, I'm not really going to film uh, too much of it I'm just going to crack on with it and try and get it done so around this area there's quite a few that are a bit, little bit uneven only by tiny little bits and then we've just got two down here that are high the rest of them are all fine a couple here one two three four five six seven eight nine and two down here that are quite high uh, those two will be easier. Once them two is level, we'll get the other number. I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is a few methods I can apply to get this done. But when I've got a lot together like this, where we've got a few high spots, I find it better to take something like I'll take a blue marker. I've got black on there. I don't want to be removing any blue, really. So, it'd be a bit easier if I had a red marker. I don't have one right now. The one I do have, it's got no ink in it, but I don't want to remove in too much from these blue ones. But the black is definitely got to go. I should have done this off camera, colored all this in, it's a lot easier. And for argument's sake, I'm going to say we're up to about nine and a half hours now when all said and done. I'm going to do a rough estimate of the time. It's taken to do the whole job just to give an idea of how much work actually goes into this. Now, this is quite a coarse file, but I'm not too bothered. So I'm going to just go across and I'm going to skim all the black off. Should make pretty short work of it, and we shouldn't really touch any blue. years and it's the flattest one I've got. And what I'm going to do, also I've been over a little bit, I'm going to just go and check the, check the frets. That's still really high there on this edge. I could go across this way with it. But always checking, don't remove too much gear, just a tiny bit there now. thing about using a super flat file is it's going to remove a lot more material than sandpaper can so let's have a check here there you go we're in there and it looks like we're level where we need to be the good thing about doing this with a file is now when I come across I can colour all these in, I can go in, don't even need to use a 240 grit sandpaper, just go straight over with a 400, just remove those, uh, those scratches, that's still a bit high there, on that corner, or on that edge, and there, we'll come and give his edge some hammer in a minute, and it's still on that edge there, so let's see, let's mark up where I still think we're a bit high, You see, this part of the job doesn't have to take long. We've got to be pretty close here now. And that's it, you see. We're all level all at this end. Just whiz down this end now, we'll turn the file over. I know these are high. Just get these around the edge all in blue. We're going to remove a bit of the blue, we don't really want to move any great amount, so what we'll do is colour quite a few in.
draw there. And so on and so forth. So I'm going to keep whizzing across these until this one's level more or less all the way across. So it's just this one really needs to work now. So that is all of the frets more or less leveled. Not absolutely done yet. Um, let's get all this crap off. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to cover the whole lot in blue. All of the frets I'm going to go across with the leveling beam. We're going to level everything off. We're still zeroed out on the dials here. It means we've not moved anywhere. It's going really well. So just about finished off now. The leveling's done. Um, I'm just, I've just been across with the fret rocker, everything's level. Um, bear with me a second, just get all this wiped off. And we're now ready for the crowning. Again, for argument's sake, let's, well we're around right about 10 hours now. Um, the frets are leveled. As you can see, we've got no rock anywhere, which is great news. We haven't had to remove a lot of material. Uh, at least half the frets have had nothing removed, which is great. Well, by nothing, I mean minimal. Um, so that is brilliant. It means it's going to be easier to crown these. It means it's going to be a quicker job. Some of these can be right pain. That's brilliant. Really happy with this, how this has gone. So I'm just going to mark these all up again and I'm going to move on to the crowning. Whilst doing the crowning I will also do the beveled edges. I will get my super fine razor file, well it's not a razor file, it's a number 4 cut Swiss file made by Valord and I will round off these edges once I've done the crowning um, just to remove any burrs and when it comes to sanding we'll just round them over as well. Um, so I'm going to crack on with that like I say all that. You've seen it all before. It's not imperative now but I keep these dials at zero but if you can see they're still at zero, still at zero. It means we've not moved, that's why I clamp each end the jig. Uh, nothing has moved at all so it's going absolutely brilliant. Like I say, I'm going to crack on with the, uh, get them all penned up, get them crowned and uh, I might come and show you a little bit of rolling these edges over in a bit. I've just realised I'm already up to 29 minutes on this part of the video, part 3, so I'm going to end part 3 right here, right now. I know it's halfway through a certain job, but we're going to come back in part 4 where I'll show um, what I've had to do to the electrics and we'll get on with the, uh, the levelling's done on the frets, just need to be recrowned and polished now. So make sure you come back for that. This is Victor Christian signing off part 3 of this Bernie Les Paul Custom from 1983. Keep checking my website, facebook.com forward slash N-G-O-N-E-S-E-V-E-N. That's facebook.com forward slash N-G-1-7. And I'll see you back in part four.